And yes, high school football starts Friday night as the Huff Huskies look to repeat as conference champions. Huff has a residency in the high school football playoffs every year, and they have star power too. Time now for the football Friday night game of the week at Huff. And it's a Huff game, so you know we got to show another Nolan Hooser field goal. 52 yards here from one of the top legs in the country puts the Huskies up. 3-0 in the first quarter. That guy can kick. He really can. Clemson needs him really badly. It's a 6-0 lead <laughs> for our first touchdown of the game. Jeremiah Jones. When you think of Huff, you think of consistency. Striking fear into many coaches and ending playoff runs throughout the years for countless top four A schools in the NCHSAA. For the past three years, 2020 to 2023, Huff has made playoff runs all the way to state semi and quarterfinals in every occasion. The dedication of coaches, the camaraderie among players, and the unwavering support from fans propelled the team to unparalleled success. But this year there is a new head coach in town, Deshaun Baker, previously the head coach of Cox Mill High School, and he's here to change that and bring the long-awaited ring to Huff. Daydream, for a couple of hours on a beautiful day. Kind of, you command the kid like that, man. It's, for me, my heart breaks for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? It breaks because he's a great kid. He's a hell of a ball player. And, you know, it's just, it's one of the things, man. He is, he's a kid that you ask the question, like, why him? Right. You know what I'm saying? So many other people out here not doing what they're supposed to. And, just doing whatever. And this is the kid who works and this the, the And this is the kid that got to wear all this stuff on his sleeve. Like he, great kid, great individual. His parents raised him right. Like he's just, he don't say much. You know, he leads by the way he plays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was, literally, he was telling me, he's like, I don't even say nothing. Yeah, he don't, he don't say nothing, man. He don't say nothing. And just talking about him, man, like a lot of times we talk about it. I don't really like talking about it to you know, me and the coaches, we talk about it, but it's kind of tough for him because he's such a great kid. Right. You know, we like, oh, man, we're going to talk about it. But you, you get you get teary-eyed talking about it because it's in. It's in. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, man, like, man, he, he, he got this going on. Ain't, there's no way. Right. You know, but he, he just, he, he fights his battle. He don't cry, like I said, and he's yeah. he, he going with it. At this point, it is mid-August, and Coach Baker has arranged a 12 a.m. practice for the boys to get some bonding done. But first... They are doing some weights during the day. After we get done, all right, we're going to the cafeteria, we're going to eat. Um, what Katie next? What your mama get? Pasta and what else? It was a whole bunch of pasta. Chicken Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, let's get, go to the weight room, let's go to these meetings, let's have a healthy practice tonight. Hey, you see how Huff do it. Right, let's have a healthy practice tonight. Sit your ass. And so the 2023 to 2024 season has begun. Going into the 12 a.m. practice, uh, I think kind of felt pretty good. We look good as a team. Uh, I feel like the weight room has been the best it's ever been. Uh, we had some, had some people donate some money, so definitely appreciate those people. We got the best equipment. I'll probably say in CMS. Coach Baker's a great weightlifting coach. Uh, everybody's stronger. Everybody's body looks the part. So I feel like the weight room has been going very well. Behind the scenes, though, Anthony Walker was going through more than anyone could ever imagine. I'm going to start from the beginning. In eighth grade, um, I pretty much had 30 pounds of extra fluid on me, um, which caused me to have pretty much a lot of inflammation and stuff like that in my legs to where I was swelling up. 
So one day my dad kind of pressed into my legs and saw that it was an indent. So uh, he pretty much wanted, he pretty much said like, that, that's not right, it doesn't look right. So we went to the urgent care, kind of got checked out and uh, they ended up diagnosing me with a kidney disease called FSGS to where I was building up too much protein in my urine, uh, which kind of caused me to like swell up. So at first, the beginning of the process was pretty much just me being in and out of the hospital, kind of figuring out what medications that were going to be able to <laughs> level out everything. Um, so that process was about, I want to say like four months. Um, and then eventually we kind of got everything leveled out. I mean, of course I still had the kidney disease going on, but it wasn't to the point where I had to be in and out of the hospital. Right. Um, so pretty much that's pretty much what it was throughout my freshman to my getting into my senior year. I mean, then just figuring out the right medications. I'm saying we had a <clears throat> we had the certain medications that I was taking. I'm saying that would cause me to kind of help everything, and then eventually towards my senior year, pretty much after I was losing that Grimsley game, I found out that. It's got to the point where my kidneys are not able to function on their own to where I would have to, you know what I'm saying, go on dialysis um, to where it, uh, I would sit in there and it kind of hook me up to this machine where it filtrates and cleans my blood because that's what your kidneys do. So like, like, like I said, my kidneys don't do that on their own. So, I mean, I got to the point, like I said, I'm just like, <laughs> why me? But... I'm saying it's okay. I've taken on the chin, and uh, I feel like God has something in store for me that's even bigger. So, yeah. After the boys finish their lift, they move on to having a team dinner before it hits 12 a.m. and practice begins. That's why you're so big, man. What? Like, like, <laughs> Oh my God! He said, "Dude, you can snack, man." Say, snack don't, do I'm, don't do what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Finna grow. Mm. Oh, good, it's good. It's good. We out here, we got this midnight practice going on, man. We better have some of these pads thumping tonight, man. We're gonna see who go down, get it done tonight. We're gonna separate the boys from the men tonight, baby. Got some new guys, so kind of getting them adapted to the system. Offense looked all right. Uh, so, I don't know, def def defense was on was on a good page. So, uh, just, just coming us, just seeing us come together and uh, having camaraderie. Yeah. Hey, right here, here we go. Hey, listen, we got 15 minutes of Indy. Then we're gonna go one on ones, and then we're gonna go blitz pick up. Pre-game or you just pre-game Indy? Pre-game Indy? What you just want to do? We're going to do, do uh, pre-game Indy next Thursday. All right, okay, bet. Yeah. Hey, so we're going to go 15 minutes to Indy. Then we got hey, one on one to Blitz pick up. Once we get done with that, what we did this morning with punt and all that, all we're going to do is run the punt team on, make sure we got everybody run them on. Do that with every special team. Then we're going to go red zone. Then we got a couple drives. So when we, when we do our drive, if we get stopped, we got a punt. Punt team going to come out and punt it. Then we'll start the drive over. All right? Hey, let's take care of each other. Let's go hard. All right? Clock us in. Clock us in, Dawson. Hey, clock it on me. Clock it on three. One, two, three. Clock, clock in. in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I got you. I'm not even. We're not out there yet. I'm going to start some. I'm going to talk some high shit on Devin. Wait, wait till we go red zone. Wait till we go red zone. I'll start a fight right now, bitch ass nigga. Oh, that nigga scared as fuck. Hey, I ain't gonna hit no cripple. I ain't gonna hit no cripple. I can't hit the cripple. Oh, what do you do, man? You already know, man. Huff, huh? Best huff, huh? You already know. Got to, man. Best DB in the nation. We the best team in the nation. Man, I feel good, man. I feel like we finna take it all the way with my teammate. Man, this a big year for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I trust in my game. I feel I say 11. 11 out of 10. Yeah. You know it. 
You always got to keep that mindset, man. Sauce Lynn. That's what they call me. Sauce Lynn, you know. <laughs> hey, Sauce Lynn on the play. Damn, he got them big ass. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Oh, get the ball! Get the ball! Oh, yeah! Uh, this team is come, coming together as a team. Uh, that was good. Um, so, uh, I feel like the 12 a.m. practice was a good thing for us. Definitely built a relationship. You know, the first couple of games, we were, we was everywhere. You know, we were, we were still trying to figure out who yeah, we were offensively. It was, like, it was, it was bad. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a sugar coat. It was bad. You yeah. know what I mean? So, we were trying to figure it out. And we had some new starters on varsity. Trey was a new quarterback. He was still trying to figure himself out. And it was our job to, you know, figure out how to help him be a better quarterback. The date is August 19th, and the boys arrive at the Memorial Stadium in Uptown Charlotte to face James F. Burns in their first game of the 2023 to 2024 season. Not a ball player. Straight up. We should take the field and punish their ass from the start. From the start. We gotta control the line of scrimmage offense. We gotta control it. Defense, do what you do. Get to the ball, all right? None of the goddamn deep balls, none of the pump fakes, the lock key one locks, none of that. Play your game, do your job. That's it. Don't try to do more than what you're supposed to do. If we take care of the ball offensively and let our defense play and move the ball, we're going to win this damn game. I'm telling you right now. They think they some bad motherfuckers. We some bad motherfuckers too. Straight up. <coughs> we going to let nobody come in and get them to take over our territory. They done got them came from two hours. Let's go. 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 let us go Offense had a rocky start, but defense, however, that was a different story. But watch you bring home. You see a black man with a white woman at the top floor, they gon' come to your King Kong. Middle America packed in. Can't to see me in my black skin. Number one question they ask him. Uh, going in, we felt well, well prepared. Uh, you know, our defensive coordinator, Chachi, uh, he, he always prepares us very well. So you get to play cat. You got to Offense looked decent. Defense looked decent. So uh, we, we felt we felt we felt ready. We felt ready for this game. We got us in good hands, bro. They got us in good hands. We have to damn execute like we talked about. Yeah, we got Ashton and them Dawson running wide over down the field and we didn't get them on the back side. Even your 6'8", 250, whatever you are, you cannot be getting them before they get from the blind side. Come on, man. I mean, Ashton got them sitting in the end zone by himself. Every set we done had there came from your side, Egan, every time. Dude, come on. You gotta have some fucking heart. Gotta have some fucking heart. Defense keep playing out there the way you're playing. We don't picture you in some fucked up situation. Alright? One team. Nolan, let's get the ball out there. Kick the ball, Nolan. Kick the ball. Kick it. Fuck that! He took the goddamn human like you. Why y'all always talking about goddamn these boys out here fucking good and shit? God damn, you can't die! Damn! Uh, trash can. Uh, <laughs> oh man, everybody's face. I don't think they've seen that side of you, Coach. Man. 
I'm just, I'm passionate. But it's, at the end of the day, it's all love. Like, yeah, look, no, look near, I, like I, it wasn't. Again, the passion that I have for the game, and this game has treated me so good. This game has taken me places I never thought I would go before. You know what I mean? Just playing a game of football. And I just, I want our guys to have that damn mentality of, like, no matter who we play, it don't matter. Like, they can't see us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, our defense has that mentality. And we're trying to have the whole team have that mentality. And so it's, it's, it's going to come. It might take a little time, but it's going to come. <laughs> Is As the second half progresses, Huff slowly makes their way into the Burns territory. And into the territory. Unfortunately, though, it was not enough, and Huff would start their season 0-1. Because I knew, we, I knew we gave the game away. Like, defensively, we gave ourselves a chance the whole game. And, you know, offensively, we did some things wrong and, you know, out of character you know, that we normally wouldn't do, that we haven't done since spring ball. And it was just frustrating because I knew the execution wasn't there when we needed it to be. And um, anytime that you uh, office a guy and you call him the plays and things ain't working like you wanted to work, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. But again, you coming out with eight new starters on offense, and you know, and so Trey's first first year being a starter in a game like that and that magnitude, and he has some he has some first starter jitters, you know, first starter moments, and you know, we just got to jail. You know, that's going to be the biggest thing, us gelling together. We got four new offensive linemen uh, from the team last year. So just us gelling together, man, that's that's the, the biggest part, the biggest the frustrating part, us just not gelling together in the offense that first week. I think it's just the little things that got us, like stuff we hadn't really made mistakes on that came and got us. So we just kind of corrected them this week. Didn't do anything different than what we normally do. Just fix a little small stuff. Yeah. Tomorrow, these boys will be playing Myers Park High School in hopes of fixing that record and beginning a winning streak. But first, they support their JV brothers and show out to their game the night before. Alright, all right. it's going to be loud tomorrow. Myers Park versus Huff is going down. Y'all already know who's going on top. Hey, DJ Bates. Come on, dog. Hey, DJ Bates. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Where are you lying? Hey. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to be around the game of football, but, you know, I'm still going. Go, and go to school like everybody else and be a student like everybody else. So, right, right. I mean, I'm not sure if I have time, but yeah, I definitely still help around, try to be around the game as much as I can be. Right. You are crazy. You are crazy. Time now for the Friday Night Frenzy, our game of the week. Myers Get that boy this mess. Not much offense in the first half. Block PAG there by the Mustangs. And third, it's 6-3 in favor of the Huskies. Let's go, Huskies. They got it right here. Trey Blakeney hands off to Jameson Thunderbird. Up to the edge. 30 yards. Right here, Trey Blakeney hands off to Jameson Thunderbird. Up to the edge. 30 yards. Right here, Trey Blakeney hands off to Jameson Thunderbird. I just took the keys because for them arguing over Tesla. Why you think that he gon' rap for you? He gon' do what I'm talking. I don't stop at red lights anyway. It's green light when they catch me. Grab that tech, no. Grab that Mac, tell him I have my back, no. He a rat, yeah. Ticking on that net, yeah. Turn you to a pack, yeah. Turn up in that cat, yeah. That 40 block my gap, yeah. Run, bless that strap, yeah. Take you chain his cap, yeah. That rap money in the trap, yeah. Play with me, get clout, yeah. Hello?
Now they have some good athletes, but I'm saying, yeah. luckily we got the win. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that one clip with Sean just like dropping the entire like defense. Yeah, yeah. that was. Oh yeah, that was God. a crazy. That was a crazy play. That was a crazy play. Things were going good until tragedy struck, but this tragedy came with some good that would turn Huff into the most feared team in the Queen City Conference. Honestly, like, you know, I tell everybody, like, Jason getting hurt the, the second game of the season against Miles Park was the best thing that happened to us. It was the best thing that happened to us. You know, he went out for the whole year, but we, we got a chance to figure out who Will Jones was, mm -hmm. you know? So we were still trying to figure him out, and we found out who he was. It's fucking dog. Like, we, we found out who he was the game Jason was out, and it helped us because we were able to move Jason around him and use him in a multitude of ways, and not just the backfield. Right. You know, backfield, H back, H uh receiver, whatever we whatever we may be in in our defense, man, you know. Last year Huff lost to Dutch Fork twenty seven to twenty four in their first game of the season. Now these two teams rematch and Huff looks to score that win versus the South Carolina five A powerhouse. Huff got the win, but what was one of the best parts? Coach Baker's high school coach had come to watch, and let's just say it was all a sight to see. But I told y'all, when we play together, 
because of their team, we tough. We tough. We believe in each other. We there backing each other up. We are tough. Caden, sit your ass down. Stop moving. You too smart. Hey, enjoy it. Listen, enjoy it. We got a damn two hour ride home. We got pizza to eat. But listen, listen. Guys, clean the block more. Don't leave it. It was after this game that everything turned around for the better. Listen, it's a bye week. We got Coach PJ over here. Check my boy out. Hey, come on, P. Mr. P. Oh, oh, you about to see me on. I want to see in the comments. I want y'all, y'all, y'all put the percentage that Eli catches this shit. We gotta get I'm some of this though. Eli, you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It ain't over. That was just a goddamn stepping stone. All right? Now the new season begins. We're getting them started this conference run. All right, Eli, you got one more, right? Free, hey, free zero, baby. Free zero. Free zero. Hey, enjoy your weekend, guys. Hey, be good. Be good. Molly DeMass, student at the University of Virginia, is one with far-reaching effects here in the Charlotte area. He had an infectious personality, a, a, a unbelievable smile. Uh, every day he brought an energy and exuberance about him to practice, to school, and everything that he did. And yes, high school football starts Friday night as the Huff Huskies look to repeat as conference champions, coming off their first ever conference title in school history last season. Their backfield, it's going to help in that quest to repeat. All right, Nate, here we go, right? Opening night is upon us. A couple games tonight, yes. most of the games Friday. A triple header of high school football in the Turf Kings Invitational in the nightcap burns versus Huff and the start of the Deshaun Baker era at Huff. 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 At Huff. Yeah, so this is a rematch from the regular season where Mallard Creek won 13 to 9. So the question that we all want to know, <laughs> can the Mavericks do it again and head to the third round? So with the uniform, man, we, we, uh, we came up with this, uh, the blue color. And so we wanted to, to bring the blue back out, uh, use a little more of the blue. And you know, we like Dion always say, man, look, you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good. So. You know, we wanted to bring these uniforms out, man, for the kids, let them feel good, let them look good. But, you know, with us, it was the biggest thing was just trying to bring the blue back out. You know, um, you know, we never had the blue in the uniform like we do now. your law or are you just gonna sit there and ignore the legacy that was left by our brothers before us we owe it to them to leave it all out on the field one play at a time one drive at a time one mistake and it's all over but no one said it was gonna be easy the queen city is a city where dreams are fulfilled but this ain't our dream it's our destiny it ain't personal we just wanted more than you and we're here to prove it it's halfway or no way let's rock
trying to figure it out. And we had some new starters on varsity. Trey was a new quarterback. He was still trying to figure himself out. And it was our job to, you know, figure out how to help him be a better quarterback. I think North Mac was definitely the game that just changed it for Trey. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Trey Blakeney had himself a game against North Mac, leading Huff to yet another victory and finding himself as a quarter back on the way. Huff had just become unstoppable, and there was nothing to block him. Listen, I'm guessing it's time that I take that top spot, cause I got the game in the headlock. Roll it up like I got dreadlocks. Pop it out, yeah, call that hair box. We ain't giving out no karate chops. It's laser sights and his head shots. Pedal to the metal with the strap concealed. To my enemy, pushing up back and deals. Bring the energy like ten of me. Yo, methamphetamine, pop it up, pop it up. Been there, seen that, done that. Run, rap, one lap, unpack, come back, see. Don't I make it look easy? Nesta right there. Yes, sir. Let's get it. That was crazy. The Chambers game, like, that was a dog fight for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely was a dog fight. We yeah. always had a dog fight with them. I'm yeah. Saying. A lot of the players went out with, like, injuries that game. Yeah. So it was a tough battle with those yeah. boys, so. Eli Anders is now back from a two-game suspension. Him being there will be a big contributing factor in Huff's win against Chambers today. <laughs> It's never been a better day to have a fucking day. Let's have a fucking day. Let's have a fucking day. It's fucking inches, I'm sitting on the blitz. Live on the toilet, I stay on my dick. You say we off, but you stay on my dick. My shooter, a rapper, I send him a hit. They be on Twitter like when he gon' miss. Say I fell off, but I fell in it. The white flag, I ain't telling him. I play a cool and hand Brody the blitz. Got your stew just to show you I'm rich. Now you can't drop no new music. How you jump right on that song and it snitch? You sassy and wrong as a say the wrong thing and get put on that list. The winning streak would continue. Chambers, West Mech, West Charlotte, Harding, Mallard Creek, Hopewell, until the playoffs. Still, don't with rappers cause most I'm snitch. Diamonds don't cover my neck and my fist. Watch on my leg cause I ran out of wrist. Draco Brown like a Hershey. Hang out the window and blow him a kiss. Hang out the window and wave at his gun smoke. I take it far when I'm pissed. kidney disease and be able to also play the game as well so it was kind of I was kind of I was something new for them to be honest so I would kind of go into the doctors and my dad would like tell them what I did a game or that I have these scholarship offers and they would be so surprised because they're just like we don't know how you're doing this right. but yeah so I mean I persevered through all the pain I feel like that like pushed that. you to just go harder yeah harder. definitely definitely because yeah. I'm saying I'm doing something that nobody else can do you know right. I don't Sit there. I don't want to sit there and complain about it because it's people going through other stuff in life. So, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Tonight, the boys suit up for the last conference game of the season. But first, the seniors are commended for their leadership and attributes throughout their time here at Huff. Hey, Texas Coach Simmons, I love him, man. I love you, Coach Simmons. <laughs> hey, so, hey, you, you ever met that coach before? He's famous. Second boy, son. 18 years old, he's been a dog since he was five. He's been a dog. Go check him out. All the way up. Linebacker. He was granted to a linebacker. Oh, yeah. Two years. That's right. That's since it was senior night, the coaches let the team manager, Will, get in the game and get some sacks. Will! Will! Come here. Wait, right here. That's Will? That's Will. This one is 70. is escorted by Pierre Boumet and Michelle Boumet. He's known the squad for three years, most memorably as a part of the cheerleading squad. And he gets Kennedy Cox. 
Kennedy is escorted by our parents, Joe and Julie Cox, as well as siblings Tiffany and Joey. She's been on the cheerleading squad for two years, most memorably was the time when the team bus rides went to the away game. After graduation, she plans to attend a four-year university to major in business and continue to earn a master's degree. Leyland, though, she's escorted by her mom, Heather Holland, stepdad Andrew Price. She's been a cheerleader here for two years. Her most memorable time was getting second place at the stage. She played a senior Lily Gann. She's escorted by Todd and Tanya Gann, been on the squad for three years. Memorable, memorable for her is getting ready for the games together. She plans to attend a four-year university, majoring in biomedical sciences, and ultimately get a master's degree. Ladies and gentlemen, senior is Kira James. She is escorted tonight by her mom, Daniel Where is it? What pocket? Uh, it's in the, the, the like, like one of the side pockets. Her memorable time is teaching future Husky cheerleaders at the clinics and cheering at the games together. Here? Here. After graduation, she plans to attend yes. four year university, major in public relations or marketing. Where's the other one? Senior other side. Kira James. Our next Husky senior cheerleader tonight is Bailey Lyons. She's escorted by her parents, Wendy and Mike Lyons. She's going to be squad for three years. Our memorable time is cheering yeah, for Memorial Stadium. It's probably on the other pocket. Yeah, and major in biology. Ladies and gentlemen, senior Bailey Lyons. Oh, our next senior cheerleader. She's cheered here for four years. Her most memorable time is cheering at Memorial Stadium. Plans after graduation is to attend the four-year university, majoring in international business and then continuing to get her master's degree with hopes to study abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is senior Lacey Mayhew. And our final senior cheerleader this evening is Aubrey Miller. Aubrey is escorted by her father and mother, Derek and Catherine Miller. She's been on the squad for two years. And the most memorable time was cheering at her first home game with Hub last year after moving. At the graduation, James Nestra. James is escorted tonight by his parents, Jim Nesta and Marla Nesta. He's been a part of his football team for three years. His most memorable time was beating three. He is Anthony Walker. Anthony is escorted tonight by his parents, Tony Walker, Natasha Walker, and sister Davis. He's been a football player here for three years. The most memorable time is getting to over there. in the third round of last year's playoffs. Congratulations, Archie. Great football at James. He is escorted tonight by his parents, Greta Hughes and Harold McIntyre, who's been a player here for three years. Most memorable of the time was Stephen East Forsyth during his junior year. At the graduation, Xavier plans to attend tonight by his parents, Teresa Newman and Anthony Morrison, and brother, Cody Morrison. He's been a football player here for two years. Ryan's most memorable time was traveling to Tennessee for camp and then to the University of South Carolina for seven versus seven camp the next day. At the graduation, Ryan plans to further his football career in college and major in exercise science. Ladies and gentlemen, senior Ryan Morrison. Where's number eight? He is Jacob Dawson. Jacob is escorted by his mom and dad tonight. He's played football here in Huff for three years. The most memorable time was the team dinners. And Jacob's planning to attend Gardner Webb University and play football for the Bulldogs. Come on, Jacob Dossie. And he is Will Jones. Will is escorted tonight by his parents, Frank and Justin Jones, and sister Emma. He's been a part of football program here for four years. His most memorable time was summer school trip to Tennessee and the University of South Carolina. After graduation, Will plans to attend the top three degree football. His majors are decided it will be something that will be the best So I just found out a while ago. I just found out my Such a beautiful day. I dream of the places I've been. Brandon, 
Most memorable time was making the very first person. Carter's has started by his parents, Teresa and Jeff Person, who's been a part of the marketing squad for four years. Most memorable time was building the relationship with the coaches and players, as well as celebrating the win in the At the graduation, Carter goes to attend the Florida University. Will notoriously would smack the players' helmets before games in a friendly manner. The boys thought it would be a good idea to return the favor after seeing their guy do great in his first game. Husky Nation, playoffs are here. It's time to defend our home and take what is ours. We didn't come this far just to come this far. We worked way too hard to not go all the way. And yet, they still doubt us. We stayed quiet for way too long. And now it's time to break the silence. That chip is what we're after. Anyone who gets in our way needs to be stopped. We will do anything and everything we need to do to get there. This time is different. We're hungrier than ever. It's time to let the world know who we are, and we're going to make sure they remember our name. We still got a lot more to prove. It's 0 -0. Husky Nation, rise up. This is just the beginning. You don't just, you don't just get all these, these accolades and, and all this stuff without putting in work. 
not. Lay hold of it. You lay hold of it. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. Time now for the Friday Night Frenzy, our game of the week, Myers Park hosting Tucker. Picking this game up in the fourth quarter. Let's get a 49. Jameson Thunderbird. Hard to hit. 17 yards the hard way. Let's have a piece tonight winning this one big. 56 to nothing to win the outright conference title. Now these two teams tied for first place in the Team City Conference with 3-0 records. A win tonight puts you in the driver's seat for that conference title. Same conference as AC Reynolds. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I, I want to say no, I did beat AC Reynolds. The playoff winning streak would continue. Asheville, then Porter Ridge. Until finally, it came time to face an old friend. She shot me, she shot me, bang, bang, she shot me, she shot me, she shot me, bang, bang, she shot me, she shot me, she shot me, bang, bang, she shot me, she shot me, she shot me, bang, bang. She was walking around. Seriously, as a throwing the pick with like Grimsley and whatnot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like you know what I'm saying we're pretty young on both sides of the ball, so everybody next year getting that, having that experience already, and knowing what it feels like to to take that L, I feel like they're coming back with some type of vengeance. So I feel like they come back even stronger. They'll work even more harder in the weight room on the field. So right. big thing for me, man, like coming back to uh, I knew none of the kids. Like, not one kid on this team that, that I came back to was there when I was there. Right. You know what I mean? Not one. So, coming back, man, it was just, 
trying to learn them, trying to build a relationship, trying to get them to understand me, our philosophies and all that stuff. And, you know, they bought they they started to buy in, you know what I mean? You know, we had our we had our hiccups and, you know, people getting punished and all that stuff, but it was just it was something new to him. Right. You know what I mean? It was something new to him and you know, I was a different cat and and uh but you know, once they bought into it, man, and, and bought into the family atmosphere and we were just one team, we started playing really well. And they, and they, and they started playing for each other. You know what I mean? That's like offense doing the on the sideline, I mean on the field and defense on the sideline, like standing up beside the coaches, cheering them on, same thing, vice versa. Not all stories have the greatest endings, but one thing is for sure. This season was full of experiences, full of ups, full of downs, and there's one thing that is always certain. There is always a next season. One, two, three. Let's go. Like, I still watch the damn game. Like, I go back and watch, I'm like, man, what, what could we have done differently? What could we have game plan differently? And honestly, going into the game, I think we had probably the best game plan we've kind of had all year. I think the boys was, was looking forward to this game. And I think that, you know, offensively, we probably had the best red zone game plan we've had all year. You know, the best offensive game plan we've had all year. And, you know, we had some mishaps. You know what I mean? I, you know, it, it was just one of them things. And and I think a lot of people, man, it's, a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to win 11, 12 games in the season. They don't understand it. Like, I don't care what nobody say. Like, everybody, you know, everybody hates her for some reason. And, you know, they want to... Everyone wants to see us lose. Everybody. Like, they want to play on the downfall. They love to see, it, see us not get there. And that's the only thing they want to talk about is, you know, her getting over the hump, you know. And... Yeah, it's gonna come. You know, it's tough. It's gonna come though. But it's it's one or two teams every year that we kind of struggle with, or we have a mishap with here and there. And I just think that game, man, it was just it was just one of them games. Like nobody has driven the ball eighty yards. And that's all you have. Right. So for my my decision to go forward on fourth and three from the four yard line or whatever it may be. In my mind, in my mind, I told the kids I was like, hey, I love Nolan. I think Nolan is the best kick in the country. He is the best kick in the country. Right. But playing green is three points in the game. And if somebody got to go 95 yards, you know, push come to shove, they stop us. Okay, they got to go 95, which I don't see it happening. Well, this particular night, it happened. Yeah. You know, they go 96 yards. And it happened all year. And it wasn't because they just, Outmanned us, we just we had some mishaps, right? You know what I mean? And, and they come back and bite you when you play a, a good team, right. you know. So I just, you know, I it's tough, man. You know, and I, you know, offensively we played pretty well, but we had a couple turnovers that game too that you know that could have uh, uh, parts away the game, or, right. yeah, there. But you know, I, I thought our kids went out and played well. I thought we our season. I thought we came together as a team. Uh, Educated young man, you know what I'm saying that's still gonna prosper into life without football, you know, because right. football is not me. You know, what I'm saying football is not Anthony Walker. You know what I'm saying I'm still a, a man and a person before that, so you know what I'm saying I'm doing fine. I'm gonna be good. You know what I'm saying so. All right.